Hey, I'm Joel, you're watching Wild Rose Builds, and today we're gonna to talk about the Artillery Genius, the successor to the Artillery Sidewinder X1. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you why it's my favorite printer uh, so far. So a lot of machines come through the shop here to get reviewed for me to use them. I never take money for them, so these are all my honest thoughts. So let's go over some of the specs of this machine. Um, the bed size is 220 by 220 on the X and Y, and then 250 on the Z. So that's similar to machines we've seen before, like the Ender 3. Um, it's a little smaller, but keep in mind that they do have a larger CR10 sized printer, the, the X1, with the same features, if that's something you're looking for. It has a Titan extruder. Uh, I find they're super handy for putting your material in and using the gear to jog the filament through so you're never pushing uh, filament or, or putting strain on the hot ends to, to get your material in there. And this is the first machine I've used with a Volcano hot end. So it's longer this way so that when your filament goes through, it spends more time in the hot zone to uh, become molten plastic. And so that means you can push more filament through it quicker, which in turn means that you can increase your uh, print speeds and have good uh, layer adhesion, good, um, good ability to, to keep your, your plastic extruding properly at higher speeds and keeping your temperatures the same while you do that. So that's a good thing. So everything on this machine is 24 volts. So that means the bed heats up really quick. 
The extruder heats up really quick. So as soon as you start a print up, it's going within within 30 seconds. You don't there's no long wait time for your build plate to heat up, so that's great. The build plate itself is glass with um, that sort of perforated material on it uh, to help grip your prints. And I have had great success with these build plates. They stick right away at temperature. And uh, as soon as you let them cool down, the, the parts pop right off. So um, that's one thing I liked about this printer. So as you can see here, the extruder assembly is connected via this ribbon cable on the x-axis, uh, which is great because normally there's a, a large amount of wires coming out of the extruder assembly. So that keeps everything nice and clean. And uh, it's a pretty robust cable. I don't think it's a point of failure, uh, but they do include uh, extras if it does in fact fail. The x-axis itself is a single piece of 20 by 60 aluminum extrusion and that's just a bit more rigid than, than the normal 20 by 20 that we see on a lot of printers so that is good. So since this machine is direct drive, uh, it's able to use all your flexible filaments, your exotic filaments uh, quite easily. I I think these extruders are great, these Titan extruders, they handle everything with ease and uh, I've never had any, any issues with jamming or, or stripping of filament, grinding, anything like that. Uh, so that coupled with the um, Volcano hot end has, has made this machine super nice to work with. So as you can tell, it's printing right now, and this does use the Trinamic stepper drivers, so very minimal noise. Um, yeah, overall, just a very quiet machine. Uh, we've seen that with the X1, the, the Sidewinder X1, the, the bigger brother to this machine. So the price point of this machine at the time of recording this video is 340 US dollars, which is pretty good. It's a little more than some of the Creality machines. Uh, it's less than a CR10, um, but a machine I would compare this to and the machine that this unit actually replaced was my Prusa Mark III. So that, that machine is out of rotation for me and this one is taking its spot. So that should tell you a lot about the value of this machine and uh, it's punching weight, I guess, so. So I watched a lot of reviews on the Sidewinder X1 and uh, a lot of people were not impressed with the connectors for the ribbon cable. I don't see that being a problem. Uh, I think originally on that machine, they shipped them with uh, some sort of locking mechanism, but these ones are just pressure fit if that's a problem for you, you can hot glue them. Like, that's not a huge deal. I've ran this machine for probably 100 hours and I don't see any sign of, of strain on the ribbon connectors. Um, another thing that people had issues with on the Sidewinder that they've cleared up here is the spool holder. So you're able to just loosen one thumb screw and slide one side of that spool holder over to accommodate larger spools. So you don't have to use an Allen key like on the original Sidewinder. Um, so it's good to see that they're listening to feedback and quickly iterating on it. So assembly on this machine was super easy. It comes in two parts, everything's assembled. You have the, the Z gantry and the X uh, axis already assembled and it just slots in. There's two ports here that just click in so that all of your connections are made for you. There's no running wires, uh, stuff like that. This does have Hall effect sensors for the end stops, which is a cool feature. They're super reliable. Um, 
I'm not sure why they did it. Uh, maybe mechanical switches. Uh, I've seen a lot of those break over time, so maybe this is a more reliable option. Um, but I haven't had this printer that long, so I can't really speak to the longevity of those sensors, uh, but I'm sure they'll be just fine. Uh, there is a filament runout detection, and I normally don't use these, but I've started using them recently. And for me, as long as the filament slides through without any friction, I'm happy to use it. Uh, there, I've had some machines in the shop here where it, it introduces some sort of friction on the filament, and that's not ideal uh, when you're feeding your filament into your uh, extruder. Uh, but this one has worked out perfectly. It does have dual lead screws for the Z-axis and they are joined at the top by a belt. Um, I'm not sure why you'd need that if you have two independent Z-axis lead screws, but it's there just to keep everything snugged up and in line and in sync. So overall, I think this machine is a super good value. As I said, it has taken the spot of my Prusa machine. And uh, yeah, I guess the, the one thing that I really want to uh, hammer home is uh, the reliability of this machine. This is, and this doesn't happen often in the shop for me, but this is one machine I can just hit print on and just be 100% sure that I'm gonna come back to a completed print. Um, and you really can't put a price on that sort of reliability. So thanks for watching. I hope that gives you some insight into this machine. And if you're in the market, uh, this is definitely one I'd take a look at. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and surprise.